Welcome back to Fuel Up Classic. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, please do because it makes all the difference and there's gonna be regular classic car videos coming your way very, very soon. But today's video is something really rather special, an ultra rare hand-built V8 British sports car. But you will be easily forgiven if it's a car that perhaps you've never heard of from a manufacturer that perhaps you've never heard of. But this introductory video will tell you everything you need to know about the Marcos Mantara. It's gonna feature on the channel in regular videos. I'm gonna be living with this car. So you're really gonna to get to know about it. And crucially, we're gonna get it out on the road and see how this V8 British sports car drives. Now the history of Marcos cars starts like any good story should, with two men and a chance encounter down the local pub. Jem Marsh and Frank Costin, who decided that they wanted to build a fantastic racing car. Now Costin had a background with the Mosquito Bombers, and he wanted to use some of the things that he had learned into producing a low volume racing car. The first car was built in 1959, built in a factory, or I should say a factory, a very, very small workshop in North Wales. Made its debut and it was nicknamed the Flying Splinter for obvious reasons as it used a plywood chassis, something that Marcos would continue to do for a number of years afterwards and still eventually opting for a steel frame chassis much, much later on. But they were pioneers in what they decided to do and they had fantastic success out on the race circuit. These early Marcos cars were driven by the likes of Sir Jackie Stewart, Jackie Oliver, and a number of others, including Derek Bell also very briefly got behind the wheel of one of these cars. So they had the big names behind them. Unfortunately, like most car manufacturers of the period, they went through a number of financial difficulties over the years. And in the early 70s, the company unfortunately went into liquidation, only to resurface once again in 1976 with Jem Marsh still at the helm. The car company continued to be developed and they started to produce a fantastic array of spectacular looking cars, always with an emphasis on the driving experience. Now this particular car is the Mantara. So of course Marcos never really had the budget to develop an entirely new car in the early 90s, but the Mantara did mark a massive step forward in terms of the design and to bring this car up to modern standards. Introduced in 1992, it built on what its predecessor, the Mantula, had already created. But crucially, this car was something a little bit different. It received small volume type approval. And that meant that this wasn't just a kit car. This was a full blown car that you could go in and buy turnkey from the factory. It used the 3.9 litre Rover V8 or a 4.6 version or even a 5 litre 320 brake horsepower version was available. So there was enough power, whatever option you chose. They also decided to introduce a two litre, either turboed or non-turbocharged. You could go from mild to wild, but everything about this car is wild. And for me, it's all about that V8 rumble. Now obviously, this Marcos is all about the driving experience. So let's get it out on some good roads and see what it's like. Now Marcos certainly don't do things the normal way. And it'd be a bit of a shame if they did. The Mantara is a quirky looking car, but so is the interior. Once you climb in, and it is a bit of a struggle, it's certainly not graceful to get in and out of this thing. I'm glad I had the camera off for that. But once you're in, I'm basically sat on the floor. I literally feel as though I'm on the road surface. It really is that low. But once you're in, it's actually incredibly comfortable. The cabin is really well laid out. Everything's clear to see. I can see all the dials. 
it's not a bad place to be at all. Compared to some TVRs of the era, this is almost a bit more straightforward. And another quirk with this car is the pedals. So they're electrically adjustable. There's no seat adjustment at all in here. You adjust the pedals to your legs to create the perfect driving position. It works, but it's certainly different. But you might think that something that looks this crazy and is this wild to drive is a little bit intimidating, but it isn't. It's actually, the clutch is very light, the brakes, what this car has had recently overhauled brakes and they perform very, very well. It's certainly not a hard, horrible car to drive. It's really quite effortless. The power steering makes it really easy in slow speed situations. But what this car is all about is that engine. So let's get it out on some of my favorite open roads and open up that V8. Woo! And that was just second gear. The exhaust note is addictive. The handling is razor sharp. It really is a very pointy front end. You only have to do very minor adjustments to move this car in any direction you wish. But if you want to just cruise along, stick it in fifth. We're doing 50 miles an hour and the car is doing 1500 RPM. It's barely ticking over. You could cover great distances in this car and many, many owners do. They take them on long European journeys and I can see why, because once you're in, the Mantara is a really comfortable place to be. The only thing that you probably should be aware of is it certainly does get hot in here. You've got this huge transmission tunnel right next to your left leg. That V8 kicks out an awful lot of heat. <laughs> this car is addictive. It is all about the driving experience. It is also incredibly low. So if you live in an area with big speed bumps, you might want to go the long way round. But then that doesn't matter when you're driving this and you can enjoy that soundtrack. God, God, it's good. So it's worth noting that perhaps I'm stating the obvious here, but if you are somebody who doesn't like people looking at you or doesn't like to draw any sort of crowd or attention, this is not the car for you. I have never ever driven a car that turns more people's heads than this. It is unbelievable. People want to stop and talk to you and most people ask you what it is. They might think it's a TVR. I had somebody the other day that asked me if it was, if it was a Ferrari. I just politely laughed and told them that it was a Marcos. And now it's time for a tiny bit of technical detail on why the Mantara differed from its predecessors. They had for many, many years been using a rather outdated Triumph front suspension setup. Well, that was all taken away for the Mantara's launch in 1992. They used an up-to-date Ford front knuckle assembly at the time relatively modern and really transformed what this car is all about and also how it drives. The Marcos system incorporated a McPherson strut dampers, coil springs, anti-roll bars, and it was all loosely based on a Ford system, but Marcos put its own personal racing pedigree stamp on it to make this car drive just as good as it looks. There were a number of other tweaks to make it a little bit more livable. It was the first Marcos to have power steering. And believe me, that makes a huge difference in one of these cars. You've also got the front chassis was altered in order to accommodate that whole new suspension design. It had a wider front track. The front end was significantly updated from its predecessors, and it all just made it a much more livable proposition to have one of these cars. And there are people that cover big, big mileage in these things. This particular car has done over 100,000 miles. Now, I don't know if that means that this is one of the highest mileage Mantaras in existence, but I'd love to know 
So please do comment if you know of one that's done more miles than this. And the reason for this video is not only is this an ultra rare car, but you might not have heard of it. You might not have ever even seen one of these cars, but it was really, really important to Marcos at the time. It's a really important car now. And when I say it's rare, I really, really do mean it's rare. There was 137 Mantaras produced. That's extremely low numbers. I don't know how many have survived. I'm sure a few of them have seen the wrong side of a hedge or a ditch and been written off. So we can safely say that this car is probably somewhere in double figures in terms of how many actually survive now. And I think that with the history of Marcos and what this car means and how much fun it is to drive, it's certainly worth a preview on the channel. I will be featuring a TVR on the channel very, very soon. And perhaps we'll do a comparison video between the two because on paper, they might seem very, very similar but they drive very differently. I'd say the Marcos is something of a, a little more hardcore than a TVR Chimera. But this, there's nothing soft about this car. It is an absolute animal. So I hope what this video has done is shed some light on a car that perhaps you've never heard of, perhaps you've never even seen one, but it's gonna be a regular feature so as I do things with it, I'm going to document it and you'll certainly be seeing more of it on the Fuel Up Classic YouTube channel very, very soon.